Hey guys, JC here. Here's how you connect your camera and video transmitter and power everything using the Flip32 Omnibus flight controllers. Um, I'll be covering all the Omnibus flight controllers from the F3 all the way to the F4 Pro because they're all pretty much the same. There's only a couple differences and I will explain those differences. Also, uh, at the end of this video, I will give all of my advice, my recommendations, and how I am personally using these flight controllers. So stick around for that if you want to hear my advice. So I already made a video showing you how to power both of these flight controllers. Uh, well, technically all four of the flight controllers. If you haven't seen it, look at my Omnibus playlist. The link is left for you in the top right of your screen and description below. Now uh, let's talk about the pin layout real quick. On the F3 and the F4 with this layout, uh, this pin right here, not the very last one, but the one just above it, is labeled the RAM pin. And then on all four flight controllers, these two pins here are also labeled RAM. So what's up with that? What do they do? Basically, they are just empty pins uh, that are connected to one another. So we get continuity there on that pin as well as that pin. For the Pro version, guys, uh, if you look on the back side, you'll see three pads right here with very small text and your RAM pin is going to be the middle pad and these RAM pins are technically going to be the power pins once we make them power pins but first I have to explain going back to this layout the very last pin on the corner that is labeled VBAT and like I said in the how to power videos this is not what you think it is on almost all other flag controllers the VBAT pin is, has been historically known for the pin that you apply the full voltage of the battery to and that is what puts voltage in clean flight, beta flight, your on-screen display, and telemetry. But that is not the case for this flight controller because I've already shown you in that video you get voltage in all of those just from powering the flight controller with these pins here or using these pads if you have the pro versions. Uh, so if you were to add in another set of wires producing the full voltage of the battery going in here and going in here, something is probably going to fry. What this pin is and what it's for and intended for is just for it. This is also connected to the power pin. So once again, let's just check it. Here is the, our real main power pin that we use to power the flagging chore. And then here's the VBAT pin. See, they're connected as well. So the full voltage of the battery will be coming out of this pin. For the Pro version, guys, if you look on the back side again, like we said, the middle pad was the RAM pin, but the pin to the right is labeled VCC, and that is going to be your, it's the same thing as this VBAT pin. Now, the pin just above the RAM pin is a 5 volt power source. And on the pro boards, it's going to be this pad to the left, which is labeled 5 volt. So what this means is we can send either the full voltage of the battery to these two pins, or we can send 5 volts to these two pins. For you pro guys, all you would do is, if you want the full voltage of the battery going to those two pins, you would just place a drop of solder between this middle pad and the VCC pad. If you want 5 volts, then place a drop of solder between the middle pad and the 5 volt pad. Do not solder all three of these pads together because it will fry. For you guys that use this, you can either solder a wire in between the RAM pin and VBAT or RAM and the 5 volt pad. Uh, you can use a piece of wire or you can use, uh, say, a jumper like this. And I just put two pin headers inside of it. And then you could just stick this on and solder it like that. Or you could even just use one really big blob of solder in between two of these pins. Just to give you guys a quick little demonstration, I plugged in a LiPo battery. Let's check the voltage of my battery. I'm getting 15.6 volts. If I were to take this jumper and I'm going to place it on the VBAT pin and the RAM pin, which theoretically should send the full voltage of the battery to these two pins. 
Okay, now on the top pin, I'm getting 15.6 volts, and on that bottom RAM pin, I'm getting 15.6 volts. If I take the jumper and move it from RAM to the 5 volt pin, I'm getting 4.75, which is close enough to 5 volts, and then on the lower pin, 4.75 or 5 volts. So that's how it works. Now let's talk about how to wire in your uh, camera and video transmitter. These two pins are ground, and this goes for all the Omnibus flight controllers. These two pins, like we just discussed, you can choose either the full voltage of the battery or 5 volts to power your camera and video transmitter. And then these two pins are going to be the video in and out. This is the Omnibus F3, and this is the video in, meaning uh, this is where the camera video wire goes. And then video out would be your video transmitter video wire. Uh, something to pay attention to though is, for example, this is the F4 Pro and it's backwards. This is video in and this is video out. So my camera wire would go to the lower pin instead and video transmitter video wire would go to the top pin. Um, and then there's two more flight controllers in between. You got the F3 Pro and the F4. I could not tell you which one is video in and video out. They keep switching it up. But what I can tell you is I mean, you should have got a wiring diagram like this when you purchased it, so uh, all you have to do is just look up here. Video in, because this is on the bottom below video out, that means they're referring to this pin, and then video out, they're referring to this top pin. Um, so whichever way it is, just know that video in, that's where your camera goes, video out, that's where your video transmitter goes. And that's pretty much it. So uh, now here is my advice and what I think. Um, tip number one. Don't even use the power and ground off these flight controllers. Uh, that's the best advice I can give you. And here's my reasoning behind it. You can send either 5 volts or the full voltage of your battery. But almost all cameras can be powered from 5 volts, but not many of them can be powered from a 4S LiPo. They need some type of voltage regulator. And then it's vice versa for the video transmitters. Almost all video transmitters can handle uh, a 4S LiPo, but the cameras can't. With these pins, it's either or. You cannot have the full voltage of the battery going to one pin and the uh, have 5 volts coming out the other pin. It's either or. It's 5 volts on both or the full voltage on both. And uh, just by the way, uh, last time I made these videos, a lot of guys kept mentioning 12 volts. I'm not sure where they get 12 volts from. There is no 12 volts at all. It's 5 volts or the full voltage. I mean, unless you're using a 3S LiPo and then it's kind of close to 12 volts, but not really. But I'm just letting you know, there is no 12 volt regulator in this entire setup. Another reason why I say don't use these. In the directions and the manuals, it says that uh, these pins are filtered. And I'm not going to say that's a lie. I'm just going to say... A 5 volt regulator is not a, a LC filter. It's just not the same thing. So don't think that you're going to get any extra filtering by using these pins compared to using a PDB with a 5 volt regulator or a 12 volt regulator. It's going to be exactly the same. Or even uh, if you're using the full voltage of the battery, then there's no, there's not even a uh, regulator whatsoever. So then there's zero filtering. So don't believe what you read. You can have 5 volts going to both of these pins, but only choose to power your camera off of uh, one of these. That would be fine. And then you could power your video transmitter off of your PDB, uh, either with the full voltage of the battery or a voltage regulator. So you can power one device off of this, and you, or you could do it vice versa. Maybe you have uh, a separate 5 volt source coming from somewhere else. Uh, I mean, hell, even even these pins in the middle right here are producing 5 volts. You even have a couple more 5 volt pins over here. So you could power your camera off of one of these 5 volt pins and then power your video transmitter off of the uh, RAM pin getting the full voltage of the battery. That way you could power both off the flight controller. Uh, I mean, hell, technically, instead of using this whole RAM pin and just sending the power over here, you could just skip that step and 
place your camera off of this 5 volt power source and then place your video transmitter on this uh, VBAT pin. Now the problem with that though is that uh, these flight controllers are rated for one and a half amps. Or, except I think maybe the F3 Pro was rated at two amps or maybe three amps. I can't remember. I don't have that one. <clears throat> but the point I'm trying to make is uh, guys have been powering their camera and video transmitter off of the flight controller and running into a fuzzy video or the video cutting out or uh, just a bunch of problems. Uh, because they are reaching that limit, like they are getting close to maxing out the voltage regulator. Not only that, but it's going to get really hot, super hot, and you could potentially burn it up. So that's just, you know, reason number nine why I don't recommend power, powering your camera and video transmitter off of these. I'll say your camera, yeah, go ahead. You're fine with powering your camera off of this, but your video transmitter, I would just use your PDB and a separate uh, voltage regulator. Well, hell, I would just I would do it separate anyway, just because uh, I would add in an LC filter, and that's what I do. I just take an LC filter like this, and I run this on my frame, like next to the flight controller, and that's how I'm filtering everything. And these things are cheap; they're like three bucks. All right, so now with my tips out of the way, how am I personally doing this? Personally, I have my uh, camera video wire going in here. I got my video transmitter wire coming out and I'm not using the ground or power. And that's because I use video transmitters like this, either this one or the Cricut and there's a few others that I use. And you, these accept the full voltage of the battery. In fact, it can take up to 19 volts. So I just run my power and ground right off my PDB. Well, technically I run it right off my LC filter. but. And these video transmitters also have a voltage regulator built in, which kicks the voltage back out uh, with a 5 volt power source. And that is what I use to power my camera. So uh, every, all my power is just separate. It goes from the PDB right to this, and then back out of this to my camera, and I don't have to deal with none of this. And I also get amazing video doing it that way. So that's going to do it, guys. Uh, I hope I cleared this up for you and answered any questions. If you do have any questions, just leave it for me in the comment box, and I will see you soon.